Hi, it's the Iowa Prairie Girl here. It is an absolutely gorgeous evening. I am in Franklin County. I am just east of Sheffield, Iowa, and I am out on a prairie um, that is run or protected by the Iowa Heritage Foundation. So I'm gonna just kind of turn around as I talk here. I'm going into the sun, but just kind of show you where I'm at. Uh, just an absolutely gorgeous view. I am up on a ridge, overlooks this prairie, overlooks some farmland, got a pond in the background there. It is just an absolutely gorgeous evening. So I am looking for pasque flowers. As I mentioned, I'm on a prairie that is um, protected by the Iowa Heritage Foundation. This particular prairie was owned by a gentleman that donated his land and it's 40 acres. 32 of that has never been plowed. So we are standing on native prairie. Um, I have permission from the Iowa Heritage Foundation to be out here to look for flowers. It is a private land. Um, it's not open to the public, but I did ask for permission to be out here. If you don't know about the Iowa Heritage Foundation, I want to sing their praises just a little bit right now. So the Iowa Heritage Foundation is an organization that helps private landowners uh, protect their land. They can either sell it to Iowa Heritage Foundation, they can donate it, they can even keep it in their own in their own name, uh, but the Iowa Heritage Foundation will help them put it in a trust that will protect their land to preserve it and put it back to um, the way it was naturally. And so I'm standing here on some land that is protected by the Iowa Heritage Foundation. The other thing I want to show you behind me, uh, this land here was recently in a prescribed prairie burn. Uh, so that's pretty cool. A prairie burn is something that is necessary to keep down the trees, keep down the woody shrubs, uh, and the invasive species that might grow here as well. So those are uh, necessary burns that they do. They're like they're controlled fires. Um, and they're not just something that we've been doing in the last 50 years. It is something that's been going on um, as long as nature's been, as long as the earth has been around. Um, pre prescribed uh, or prairie burns uh, were are natural things that happen. Uh, back before white man came, before the settlers, uh, the prairies would just burn naturally by themselves by lightning. And actually, um, the Native Americans also set the prairies on fire, to, um, and that helped control. Uh, the trees that would be growing on them and kept it into the natural into the natural grasslands. So what I'm doing out here today, I'm looking for uh, pasque flowers. So when I get down to those pasque flowers, I'm going to show you uh, show you those flowers um, and tell you about them. Pretty excited to be out here. I uh, it's been a long day for me. It is uh, Tuesday, April fifteenth. I had to drive to Des Moines this morning for a meeting. Been sitting in a classroom all day long, and now I'm on my way home. And so I stopped in Sheffield uh, to look for these flowers. And I have to tell you, I was really, really tickled to find them. I've found at least thirty clumps of past flowers here. Um, I'm out here by myself just having a ball, smiling and giggling to myself every time I find a flower. So uh, just in a moment here, I'm going to go and set up the camera and we'll show you the past flower. So now I'm here on the side of a hill, and in front of me I have some pasque flower. Now like I mentioned, I found about 30 clumps, so that was just amazing to me. And it's a good thing as soon as I got here that I started taking pictures, because the flowers were open when I got here, but the sun is setting. As you can see by the, the sun in my face here, it's setting. I only have about 20 more minutes of sunlight here. Um, but since I started taking pictures early because the flowers have now closed up, these flowers were open. Uh, so as you can see, it's a very delicate flower. The pasque flower has a very, very short blooming period. It only blooms for about two weeks. And it can bloom between uh, uh, March and April. Now, often the pasque flower will bloom uh, when there's still snow on the ground. So it just depends on when, it, when it f the weather finally warms up for these uh, little guys to come up. They have a very hairy stem when they come up. Um, you can, I don't know if you can see here, but I do have, I've taken pictures that I'll include in my video. They have a real hairy stem and that hair actually probably helps insulate the flower because it blooms pretty early um, when it's still kind of cold out. Uh, they're often found on the side of a hill and that's where I'm at right now. Kind of a rocky hill is where you'll find them. They're kind of hard to find. Um, they're 
they're like looking for a needle in a haystack or actually like an Easter egg. So mentioning Easter, Pasch flower is an Easter flower. That's the other name for it is Easter flower. Pasch is a Hebrew word for Passover. Um, so it's often associated with, with Easter, which is appropriate because Easter is just um, a couple days from now. So as I mentioned, it has a very delicate uh, flower. It has um, five to seven what you would call petals. They're really not petals. They're um, sepals, but uh, a past flower actually doesn't have petals. Um, the colors that you might find them in, they vary from blue, purple, white. Um, they have a real uh, kind of a blunted tip when they're open. Um, and then the other thing about a past flower, and I hope I got a picture that I can show you, they have um, veins that are parallel in the, on the what you would call a petal. So they have like a veiny or a striped look to them. Now, Pasquar is, is kind of new to me. This is only the third time that I've seen it. Um, I've read that they have a basal leaf. A basal me leaf means that the leaf is at the base of the flower, but that only comes up after the flower um, has bloomed. And so hopefully I'll come back later this spring and be able to see the leaf. Uh, they're also very hairy-like. Um, the, the leaf is, is like a kidney-shaped, it's fern-like, and it's hairy. I like about the Pasch flower are some of the stories that are that that come with it. So other names for the Pasch flower is the Mayflower, a rock lily, April Fool, um, and then as I mentioned uh, the Easter plant, and then it's also called the Prairie Crocus. But what's really cool about it is that it really signifies uh, that spring is here. It is the first prairie flower that comes up, um, and when it blooms. It was, it was celebrated. It was celebrated by the Native Americans and it was celebrated by the pioneers that lived, um, that came before us and lived out on the prairie. So why celebrate the Pasch flower? Well, just like you and I celebrate spring when it comes, uh, showing, seeing the Pasch flower come up meant basically that you made it through the winter. Actually, the Native Americans um, in South Dakota the Native Americans that lived um, in the north part of South Dakota would make boats, celebration boats, and they would pick pask flowers, and they would put the pask flowers in the boat, and they would send it down south the Missouri River, and that was to let the, uh, their Indian friends that lived south of them know that they lived or they survived uh, another winter. Hey, we're alive up here at north. We've picked some pask flowers to show you that we've, that we've made it through the winter. Um, I've also read a couple stories about um, pioneer women out in, the south, out in South Dakota. Uh, Pasch flower is the um, state flower of South Dakota, and the pioneer women knew where the Pasch flower was on their homestead. And when the Pasch flower came out, it basically again meant, <laughs> gosh, spring is here, we, we made it. You know, we often think that uh, we've got it rough. We, we talk about, oh my gosh, we, we survived another winter. But if you really think about it, We've got heated houses, we have, we have water heaters, we, we get out of bed in the morning and we go and we take a hot shower, we turn on our car and we heat up our, our car. Um, to think that the, the pioneers that came through these great plains um, and so really truly <laughs> survived a winter in their log cabins or their sod houses and they, you know, they had to unfreeze water and just the amazing things they did. And so to know that they celebrated to seeing the pasch flower, you, we can kind of appreciate that. Uh, Native Americans also, um, in addition to the ceremonial boats, celebrated the Pasch flower. And when they found them, they they uh, they would pick them and carry them back to their um, to their homes, and they taught their um, taught their uh, children songs to sing about the Pasch flower to celebrate it. And it was also the song was to encourage other flowers to also bloom. And it's it's time. It's spring. It's time to you know everything to turn green. So this is the Pasch flower. You can uh, appreciate its beauty here. Um, like I said, it's called the Easter plant. It blooms in the springtime. It's celebrated as, uh, as the Easter plant. Uh, Pasch means um, Passover. Um, so I'd encourage you to get out and, and look for these flowers. They're a little bit difficult. It truly was looking for a needle in the haystack. I've been walking around, and as soon as I found one, um, I, shout, I let out a, 
out an explanation of joy because it was just so fun to, to, to find one. It was like an Easter egg hunt. So again, this is Iowa Prairie Girl. I am out on the prairie. It's a beautiful evening. I encourage you to get out and enjoy those wild places around you. Make sure you uh, press my uh, press the like button, uh, press that subscribe button, and help my uh, YouTube channel bloom. See you next time. This is Iowa Prairie Girl.